Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us to this point when we can really pray to you and promise you that by your grace, whatever comes and whatever happens will go through. We're praying that such a decision will not only be in song, it will be acted out and it will be made a practice day to day until we see the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray that you give us the grace to go through until we reach the very end in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We are opening our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. This period of time, the Lord has been leading us to some important passages of Scripture. And when you study from the lives of Elijah, from the lives of Elisha, you really have some deep truths in the Word of God. And when you look at the response of Elisha to the call of God, it's a great challenge to everyone. Already you have understood and you have read how God told Elijah that he will choose Elisha as a prophet that will stand in his room. And now it came to the time when Elijah had to approach Elisha to throw the mantle upon him as a symbol that God was calling him. And in what we're looking at now, we look at the response of Elisha. And it is such a wonderful response that I do not want to miss the lesson that God has for us in a passage. We're reading 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shepherd, who was plying with a yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah, and he ministered unto him. In those three verses, we have an important lesson we can learn from the response of Elisha. I titled the message of today, Burning the Bridge Behind Us. Burning the Bridge Behind Us. You will see from what Elisha had done. Elijah threw the mantle upon him. Elijah did not speak a single word. He didn't tell him what God had told Elijah. He didn't preface his action by saying, Thus says the Lord. He didn't make any explanation. He didn't promise anything that Elijah would receive if he responded to the call. He didn't even tell him that God had appointed him to replace Elijah. He had not spoken to Elijah before. This was the first time they were meeting. And Elijah passed by. He saw him while he was walking. This man was a prosperous man. He had 12 yoke of oxen. He was a dutiful, hard-working man. He was sweating on the labor and the work he was doing. It wasn't in a temple. It wasn't in a synagogue. It wasn't in a religious a church building. It was right in the open field. He saw him. And without a single word, he threw his mantle upon him. It was a symbol of the call of God. The burden upon me will come upon you. The responsibility upon me will come upon you. The cloak of authority upon me will come upon you. The mantle, the power, the garment, the robe of power and authority that have been upon me as a prophet will come upon you. The place I've been standing is where you will stand. What I have been doing is what you will do. You will change your job, you'll change your profession, you'll come to the prophetic office. But he didn't speak it in a word. He dramatized it out in action. As he threw the mantle upon him, Elisha felt the weight of the mantle. He felt the unction in the mantle. He felt the call of God coming through that mantle. He felt it on his body. He felt it in his soul. And immediately there was a conviction within him. In verse 20 it says, He left the oxen and ran after Elijah. 
He knew the urgency of the call that had come upon him. He knew the promptness with which he must react. He knew that a change must come to what he had been doing. And he ran after him. And he said, Elijah, I know what you have done. I understand the message. I am responding to the message. But when I was coming to farm this morning, I didn't tell them that I will not come back home. If I don't go and say bye-bye, they will think some calamity had happened to me and they'll be looking for me. Let me go and kiss my father and my mother. That is, let me go and say bye-bye to them. And then immediately I will not waste a moment, a minute or a day, I will come and I will follow you. Elijah replied to him, there's nothing between me and you. It's between you and God. It is God who gave the name. It is God that is throwing the mantle on you. I am only a channel to give you the call of God. Go back again. What have I done to thee? Am I the one calling you? You want to go and kiss your father and mother? Tell them at home that you are following. That's between you and God. And he returned back from him. And he took a yoke of oxen. And he took the instrument of the oxen. He bunched the instrument and cooked the animal, the oxen. That means I'm not coming back to this farm again. I don't need the instruments with which I'm plowing anymore. The instruments are burnt. And the animal is killed. Then there was a final bye-bye. He rose and he went out to Elijah and he ministered unto him. Many years ago, there was a captain over an army. They were fighting against the enemies. It was a very tough, tense, difficult, serious battle. Almost everybody was at the point of trembling. And the captain told them and gave them the marching order to move forward. But the captain realized that the strength of the enemy camp was very much more above his own army. When the captain gave an order for them to cross the bridge, as the army crossed the bridge, he blew up the bridge and burnt it up. The soldiers knew the bridge behind us is burnt up. There is no way to go back. That strengthened their determination to win in that war. And because they knew there was no way to go back, they won that battle. They were very victorious. I see what Elisha has done. It's like he has burned the bridge behind him. There was nothing to go back to. He had reached a point of no return. And since the bridge behind him had been burnt, the only thing waiting for him in front of him was a victory. That's why I put the title of the message as Burning the Bridge Behind Us. Until you burn the bridge behind you, you'll be thinking of going back. If you do not burn the bridge behind you, anytime it is tough, anytime there is difficulty, anytime there is problem, you'll be looking back because the bridge is still there for you to go back. If you forsake your nets, but you don't burn it up and you don't get rid of it, after the death and the burial of Jesus, in fact, after the resurrection of Jesus, when you are having your doubts, when you are having your difficulties, when you are having your problems, when there is confusion and commotion in your life, when uncertainty knocks at the door of your Christian faith, because the net is still there, you will tell all the other disciples, I go a fishing, because the nets are there. Elijah didn't want the oxen to still be there. He didn't want the instrument to be waiting for him. He laid his hand on the plow. He was telling Elijah, I am going through, Lord, I am going through. Through thick and thin, through the rain and the sunshine, through the difficulty and the problems, the bridge behind me is burnt up. I am going through, Jesus, I am going through. That's the message the Lord is giving us today. And there are three points we're going to look at in this message. Number one, Christ's call to follow him. You can see the call that came to Elisha. And there is a call coming to everyone today. The Lord has need of you like he had need of Elisha. Number two, consecration and cross bearing to follow Christ. You can see that in the life of Elisha. He consecrated everything. A consecration by fire, burning the instruments, boiling up the oxen, getting rid of anything that will draw him back to the world again. 
He was saying, whatever cross I meet on the way, there is no way to go back. I am going to follow. I'm going to go through till the very end. At the end of the message, you are going to see how God rewarded that man. He had power that no other Old Testament person had. He had anointing that no Old Testament person had. He had a mighty portion of the Spirit of God that nobody had. He had revelation that nobody else had. He had all the gifts of the Spirit even before the New Testament day. The Lord crowned that man. The Lord rewarded that man. He raised the dead. He multiplied food. He spoke to kings. He spoke to Gentiles. He spoke to the children of Israel. In fact, after he died, they buried him. And then the tomb was open. And there was somebody else that died. And while they were going to bury that other dead fellow, the people in the funeral procession, they saw that there were some gangs after them. Then they dropped the dead man into the tomb of Elisha. When that dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he rose up and life came into him. The Lord crowned that man with power. He crowned him with authority in life and in death. While standing and preaching and while lying in the grave, the power of God was still working through that man, Elisha. That's the third point, crowns for the determined pilgrims. Crowns for determined pilgrims. You can see determination in Elisha from the very beginning. And God is looking for determined pilgrims today. Determined people that will say, I will pray through. Determined people that will say, I will read the word, I will read it through. The determined people that will say, I will serve the Lord till the very end. Anywhere God can find such a man, such a woman, he will crown you because he always crowns determined pilgrims. Let's go back to point number one. Christ called to follow him. In chapter 19, verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephard, who was flying with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was the twelve. And Elijah passed by him. And he cast his mantle upon him. I told you already it was a symbol of the call coming to Elisha. This man was busy. It's like Moses when Moses was busy. The call of God came unto him. It was like Amos. And when he was busy picking the fruit, the call of God came unto him. It's just like Peter, like Andrew. While they were fishing by the seashore, the call of God came unto them. Like John, like James when they were mending the net. The call of God came unto them. It's like Matthew when he was sitting at the coastal. The call of God came unto him. You see the people that are busy in legitimate service. The call of God comes to them. Here we find Elisha. He wasn't a lazy, idle person. And yet, while he was faithful in the secular employment, the Lord called him. The Lord is calling everyone today. He is calling you in, his, in your own way. He is calling you so that you will respond and be useful in life. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 18. Matthew chapter 4 verse 18. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw to a brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets, and they followed him. Elisha did not delay, Peter and Andrew did not delay. They are men like you and me. It proves to us that when God calls us, we can respond immediately. Some people, when they give their testimony, they say, God called me, wanted me to be saved. I was resisting, I was resisting. It took me six months. Eventually, I gave my life to the Lord. But they say joyfully as if it's a good thing they have been resisting the Lord. That is very strange. The beautiful, the wonderful thing is that the moment the Lord is calling you, saying that you shall come and be born again, that is the very moment you need to yield your life to the Lord. You know, you have been living in sin. It may be that you are in your office or you are in the market. In your thought, in your mind, in your heart, the thought and the word of God comes unto you. Why don't you repent? It's at that time immediately you fall on your knees, you call upon the Lord, you repent, you give your life to the Lord. You don't need to wait for your husband. The call of God to salvation is coming to you as a woman. 
Somebody is giving you a charge. Somebody is witnessing to you. You don't need to think, say, I will think about it. Almighty God is calling you. The creator of the heavens and the earth is calling you. The mighty one is calling you. The Alpha, the Omega, the Force, and the Last, and the creator of everything that we can see and what we cannot see. He is the one that is calling you. That call that is coming to you is to prepare you for everlasting life. He says to give you spiritual blessing. You don't need to say, I will go back home and check up for my husband if I should answer the Lord or not. Or your husband, the Lord is calling you. You hear somebody standing in the pause and preaching the word of God. While you are there in the bus, you are feeling the tug, you are feeling the push, you are feeling the pinching of the Spirit of God saying, surrender today. You don't need to say, well, when I go to church on Sunday, I will surrender. At that moment, at that instant, when the voice of God is speaking in your heart, that's the time to surrender to the Lord. In verse 21, and going on from thence, they saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in a sheep, with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. He called them. They were with their father, they were mending their nets. In verse 22, they immediately left the sheep and their father, and they followed him. You see, the people that are going to be useful in the kingdom of God, they are the people that respond immediately. The Lord is calling everyone today, not only Peter, not only Andrew, not only James, and not only John. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the call of God to all and sundry. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Everyone that is laboring under the yoke of sin. Everyone that is carrying the burden of the problems of the world. Everyone that has not known rest or peace in the Lord. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. While you are hearing the call of God, you must not delay. You surrender to the Lord immediately. Obviously in a large church like this, there are believers and there are people that are just coming. And you are here at the right time. And the Lord is calling you. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. As the call came to Elisha, he didn't know the call would be coming to him that day. But immediately he responded in Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Reading from verse 6. Oh, come and let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Verse 7, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his son. Today, if you will hear his voice, had he not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. He's saying today as you are hearing the voice of the Lord calling you, do not harden your heart. Do not withdraw yourself. Do not delay your response. Do not say it will be another time. Come at this very time while the Lord is calling you. In 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But his long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That means he wants everyone in his kingdom. He wants everyone to experience salvation. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Isaiah 43 verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. In verse 21, these people have I formed for myself. God created you for himself. If you are outside the kingdom of God, you are not in the right place. If you are not right in the front of Christ, surrendering to him, you are not in the right place. If you have not yielded and responded to the call of God upon your life, you have not done the right thing. Your life will never be happy until you accept Christ. Your life will never be settled until you, uh, you respond to the call. The confusion will never be resolved until you absolutely give yourself to Him. These people have I formed for myself. You are not formed for athletics, you are formed for the Lord. 
You are not formed to just be making money. You are formed. You are created for the Lord. You are not made for the world. You are made for God. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show for us my praise. As we look at the call of God, there are six areas we know is calling us. Number one is calling us to repentance. If you have not been born again, the first call of God you need to consider is the call to repentance. I came not to call the righteous, but I came to call the right, the sinners, unto repentance. Number two, he comes to call us to salvation, to peace, and to rest. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. You will be restless until you find Christ. Your life will not be settled until you come to Christ. The burden will not be light until you come to the foot of Jesus Christ. Number two, he calls us to salvation, to peace, and to rest. Number three, he is calling us to fellowship. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him. He will sup with me, I will sup with him. That means he will take supper with me, I will take supper with him. I will have communion with him, I will have fellowship with him. That means number three is calling us to fellowship. You do not know fellowship until you know Christ. You will not have a true friend until Christ becomes your savior and friend. The friends of the world will disappoint you. They will backbite against you. They will destroy you. The friends of the world, they are not reliable. They may promise a lot of things. They are not going to fulfill them. Until you have Christ as Savior and friend, you do not have a trustworthy friend. Number four is calling us to citizenship in the kingdom. He wants to transfer us from the kingdom of the world to the kingdom of his dear son. Number five is calling us to service. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. It's like he called Elisha. It is a call to the service of the Lord. The service you are having right now, that is the service of the world. You are working in the post office. You are working in the market. You are working in the office. You are working in a secular school. You are working in the bank. All those kinds of services will end here in the world. The service that will be eternally rewarded is the service in the kingdom of God. And the Lord is calling you to service. He wants you to win souls. He wants you to take part in this wonderful service that will be rewarded in eternity. Number six is calling out to separation from the world. Because he tells us that anyone that will please the one that is calling him will not be entangled with the affairs of this life. No man that worries and tangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. That means he's calling us a separation from the world. It was one glorious afternoon that Elijah appeared in the field of Elisha. The Lord had just spoken to Elijah and he had told Elijah that he had 7,000 people that are not bowed down, even unto Baal. And he said, go ahead, you will anoint Elisha to become a prophet in thy room. And then Elijah appeared before Elisha. He took his mantle. He threw it upon Elisha. And Elisha recognized the Lord is calling me. There was a still small voice within him. An interpretation of the action of Elijah. The Lord is calling me. And he responded to that call of God. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 20. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 20. And he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah. He responded willingly. He responded promptly. That means he responded without delay. He responded without doubting. He responded without questioning. He responded with complete surrender, absolute surrender, total abandonment. He responded willingly. He responded as if God had been calling him for a long time. It was an immediate response to the call of the Lord upon his life. He counted the cost. He knew that all the money he could gain, all the farm product he could get, will never replace the call of God in his life. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
he knew the only way to be happy is to yield and to surrender and to commit yourself to the call of God. He ran after Elijah and he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow thee. In verse 21, and he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen. And he slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave to the people. And they did eat. Then he arose and he went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Elijah was not a popular man. Elijah was not a national figure that everybody was praising. He was a despised man. He was a hated. They hated him from the palace. A hated man. He was a person that Jezebel was looking for to kill, to destroy. Elijah was not a popular figure that everybody wanted at that time to name their children after. A despised man. A rejected man. A man for whom the world was not worthy. A man that they ridiculed. A man that was standing contrary to the whole nation. And even though the man was not popular, and the man was not being praised by anybody, Elisha said, I'm not looking for the praise of men. I'm not looking for fame or popularity. I know this is the call of God. I'm following immediately. Our church here is not a popular church. A church that teaches restitution is not a popular church. A church that teaches holiness is not a popular church. A church that tells a woman to be waiting for a right husband is not a popular church. A church that tells you to return all the money you have stolen and give it back to the bank, give it back to the government is not a popular church. A church that does not want jewelry or cosmetics or any of the painting and the palming of the world is not a popular church. A church that does not encourage all the parties, naming ceremony party, house dedication party, birthday party, all these kind of parties is not a popular church. A church that does not allow girlfriend, boyfriend, fornication, uh, pregnancy before marriage is not a popular church. A church that does not uh, preach uh, prosperity, come, everybody will become a meal that's not a popular church a church emphasizing be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is never is perfect is not a popular church Elijah was not popular and the call of God came to Elijah from this man that was not popular from a man that Jezebel was threatening from a man that had been discouraged himself a man an isolated man a lonely man a man that was preaching a doctrine that no other church will preach no other minister will preach no other person will stand up before he have and declare the truth of God he was a lonely preacher Elisha knew it was a call he must obey. It means he was joining a lonely man. He was going to stand against the tide and against the wind blowing in the nation of Israel. That's why Elisha said, Elijah, I understand. I know what you are telling me. And I know that if I follow you, trials will come. Difficulties will come. The threat of Jezebel may continue. The temptation may come for me to look back. And so that there will be no problem, there will be no temptation to look back. Let me burn the bridge behind me, then I will follow. If you find anybody backsliding today, it is because at the time of being born again, they did not burn the bridge behind them. If you find anybody becoming a prodigal son, it is because when he took the oath of following the Lord, he did not burn the bridge behind him. If you find any worker living the work of God, it is because when he came into the service of God, he did not burn the bridge behind him. If you find any preacher of sound doctrine, abandoning sound doctrine, and cannot preach it anymore, it is because when he became a preacher, he did not burn the bridge behind him. If you find a woman complaining, eh, I have no child, I have no husband, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't know what I will do now, I'm discouraged, I cannot go to house fellowship again, I cannot serve God again, it is because you did not burn the bridge behind you when you became a Christian. If you want to get to the point where you will never look back, if you want to get to the point where even Satan will know he can never touch you, he can never bring you back to Egypt. If you want to get to the point of no return, 
if you want to get to the point where you say that heaven is certain and definite, no matter the temptation, no matter the problem, no matter the poverty, no matter the deprivation, I must get to that heaven. You need to burn the bridge behind you. If you want to be very definite and certain that when the rapture will happen in the morning, afternoon, night, any time, if nobody goes from your community, you will be the only single one. You must make the rapture. You'll burn the bridge behind you. In Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 verse 10. And he said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Opa and Ruth, they decided, Oh yes, we're going to follow. We will follow you back to your nation. It's one thing to promise. It's one thing to say, Yes, I will go. It is one thing to say, I am going to heaven. It's another thing to burn the bridge behind you. Eventually, when Naomi began to explain, telling them the cost of following him, we discover that Opa had not burned the bridge behind her. In verse 14, they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Verse 15, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back. Gone back to our people, gone back to our idols, to our gods. Opa too wanted to follow. She wanted to be with the people of God. She wanted the fellowship of the children of God. She wanted to go to the city of the living God. She wanted to have covenant with the covenant people of God. She was emotional about it. She cried and she wept. There was a desire. If I could go with this woman and get to that place, that land of promise. See the people of God. Worship for the people of God. Know the people of God. Have a part for the people of God. She wanted it, but she didn't burn the bridge behind her. Eventually, she lifted up her voice and wept, and she went back. And Naomi said unto Ruth, Your sister is gone, gone from the kingdom, gone from fellowship, gone from the book of life, gone from the covenant people, gone from the narrow way, gone from the book of life and gone from heaven, gone today and gone forever, never to be seen again by the people of God, by the pilgrims who are going to heaven. Your sister-in-law is gone. How many people we can say that about today? They have gone. They wept before. They cried before. They promised before. They wanted to follow the Lord before. But they are gone. They have gone. They have gone with the world. They have gone with the devil. They have gone with the merriment of the world. They have gone out of the book of life. They have gone from the new Jerusalem. They have gone from heaven. We don't see them anymore. They are gone from the company of Bible reading, Bible believing people. And so Naomi said to Ruth, Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Something we learn about Ruth. She had burnt the bridge behind her. In verse 16, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, thy God shall be my God. Where thou diest, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more, so if anything, if aught but death, part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left speaking unto her. Isn't that burning the bridge behind her? He said, there is nothing for me in Moab again. There is nothing waiting for me in the world anymore. I am going through. I am going through. Lord, help me. I want to go through. Nothing for me in Egypt and nothing for me in Moab and nothing for me anywhere behind. I'm burning the bridge behind me. You see, that is the language of the people that have burned the bridge behind them and they are following through. They are following on. In Second Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 15. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. Ready, ready to do what the king, the king of kings and the lord of lords, what he will command, the servants are ready. Let us see the consecration of one of them. From verse 19. Then the king said unto Ittai the Gittite, 
Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger, also an exile. You may not understand here because there is now the mention of two kings. David was the right king. That's why the people said in verse 15, we will go with the king. But there was a usurper, and this usurper was Absalom. He was a false king, a pseudo king that should not have been there. So David, the right king, he said, Itai, why are you going with me? Go to the pseudo king and go to the false king. Go to the people that are saying, long leave the king, but they are not appointed by God. Jesus is our king. He is the son of David. He is the one to sit on the throne of David forever and ever. But the God of this world is the usurper. He makes himself the king and the lord in the world. And so where do you stand? In verse 19, David told Etai, he said, You go back. Do not go with us. You are a stranger. You don't have a house. You don't have money. You don't have any abiding place here. And you have just arrived. You need to settle down and fend for your family. In verse 20, Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return thou and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with you. In verse 21, And it I answer the king and say, As the Lord liveth and as my Lord the king liveth, surely in what place my Lord the king shall be, there in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. That man also had borne the bridge behind him. He said, there's nothing else I'm looking for. Oh yes, David, I know you are not popular at this time. Absalom is the popular one. I know that everybody is not looking down on you. But I know you are the appointed, the anointed one. I am not going to follow the popular one that is making himself a king. You are the one appointed by God, anointed by God. You are the one I'm going to follow. He said, whether in life or in death, I've made up my mind, I've burnt the bridge behind me. Then in verse 22, David said unto Etai, go and pass over, you are a candidate for heaven. And Etai the Gittite passed over, and all his men and all the little ones that were with him. You see, that's what the Lord is expecting from everyone. It's just like he wants you to be like Jephthah. That you have opened your mouth to the Lord, you cannot go back. You have laid your hands on the plow to walk in the kingdom of God. Come what may, you cannot go back. That brings me to point number three. Crowns for determined pilgrims. Because of our time, I cannot read too many references to you. How did God reward Elisha? In this world, in life, in death. In the great beyond, that man from the very beginning was crowned. Crowned with power. Crowned with authority. Crowned with glory. Crowned with a meaningful, useful ministry. Crowned with respect of the whole nation. Crowned with answers to prayer. Crowned with miracles in his life and ministry. He towered above every other prophet before him and after him. The highest and the tallest and the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Miracles followed him everywhere he went. The word of his mouth was power and authority. That man was crowned. He was a determined pilgrim. But we are not surprised. A man like Elisha, he will have a double portion. A man like Elisha, he will have authority and power. A man like Elisha, he must be crowned. A man like Elisha. There was a bodyguard of angels always at their post around him. Look at 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. It's so marvelous I need to read everything to you. From verse 1, and it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by a wild wind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elisha never left Elijah. Everywhere Elijah put his foot, Elisha will put his foot there. Every place he sat, Elisha will sit there. Everywhere he went, Elisha will go there. Any message he was preaching, Elisha was listening. And Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee for the Lord that sent me to Bethel. Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Where am I going again? 
who will I follow again? My yoke of oxen, I have born. To my parents, I said good night. There is nowhere to go anymore. Anywhere you go there, I will go. In verse 4, Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. He said, I cannot leave you. My life is bound with your life. My life will not have any meaning except we are associated together. I have been following you and these are the very last days you have on earth. I must hear the last word from you. I must see the last miracle you are going to perform. I must see everything the Lord is telling you. The people of the world, they say, familiarity brings contempt. That means when you know somebody very well, you follow him very well, you are following him after many years, then eventually you become so familiar, you will not respect him. The people that have studied all the chronology, the timing of the Bible events, they tell us that for more than 10 years, Elisha now had been with Elijah. And yet there was no contempt between Elisha and Elijah. Elisha still respected Elijah. He lifted him high. He looked up to him. He wanted to hear the word he will say. In verse 6, Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee. And he said, For the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. In verse 8, And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither. And so they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. This man was to be the prophet to stand in the place of Elijah. He was to continue the ministry of Elijah. He had not been filled with the Spirit. He had not been immersed in the Spirit. He had not received the anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost. No wonder he knew there was something. I have knowledge there's something I still need. I know Elijah there is something I still need. I know my calling there is something I still need. I have burned the bridge behind me there's something I'm still waiting for. I want to work for God but there's something I'm still waiting for. The quickness spirit. The empowering of the spirit. The endowment of power. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The double portion of the spirit and the anointing and the power and the authority upon Elijah. Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, I beg you, I am pleading this what I need. Let a double portion of the spirit be upon me. You see, the man was not a man with a divided heart, divided attention, divided mind. When you are born the bridge behind you, you will not be a double-minded one. You will not say, if it doesn't work well in the ministry, I will go back to my farm, my yoke of oxen is still there. If the church doesn't suit me and doesn't pay me well, I will go back to the world. I know what I left in the world, they are still there, they are waiting for me. This man had nothing to go back to, he had born the bridge behind him. In verse 10, and he said, Thou hast had a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Eventually, the chariots of heaven came to take Elijah. Elijah went up in a wild wind into heaven. And Elisha saw him. He cried in verse 12, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes. He rent them in two pieces. He said, my own personal garment is a garment of weakness. I don't want it anymore. He tore it, he threw it away. He took the mantle of Elijah. What I want is not the natural. I want the supernatural. What I want is not of the flesh. I need something of the spirit. What I want is not my natural weakness. I want supernatural power. Verse 13, he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. He said, I got it. This is why I burned the bridge behind me. This is why I forsook the world. And he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went over. I want to tell you that since that time, nothing could stand before Elijah. He always went over. In the troop of the Syrians, he went over. In the face of death, he went over. In the face of poverty and need, he went over. In the face of difficulties, he went over. From this time, he was crowned with power. 
crowned with authority. No man could stand before him. He always went over. And then the sons of the prophets, which were to be at Jericho, they saw him. And they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. The spirit of Elijah, a double portion, a mighty portion, rests upon Elisha. Where are the people today who need the spirit of God? Where are the people today who need the power of God? Where are the people today who are going to be crowned with authority and power? Where are the people today who can stand in the place of Elijah? Where are the people today who will divide the river Jordan into two? Where are the people today who will heal the sick? Where are the people today who will cast out devils? Where are the people today who will raise the dead? Where are the people today that will take the mantle of Elijah? Where are the people that are willing to burn the bridge behind them? If you are there, show yourself to God. If you are there, tell the Lord, I am here. Oh God, give us another Elisha today. An Elisha that will never go back. An Elisha that will ask for power. An Elisha that will burn the bridge behind. An Elisha that will go through. An Elisha that will pray through. An Elisha that will have authority. An Elisha that will have power. An Elisha that will be consecrated unto God. An Elisha that will take away the garment of weakness. An Elisha that will take on the mantle of power. An Elisha that will receive the double portion. An Elisha that will come back to River Jordan. An Elisha that will say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Oh Lord, give us another Elisha. An Elisha that is interested in the things of God. An Elisha that will remain in a church that is not popular. An Elisha that will be seeking after the Lord. An Elisha that will say, I will never leave you. An Elisha that will say, I never go back. An Elisha that will say, give me a double portion of thy spirit. An Elisha that will have the power of God to multiply the food. An Elisha that will have a bodyguard of heaven around him. An Elisha that will cast out devils. An Elisha that will keep on ministering till old age. An Elisha that will stand against adultery. Stand against immorality. Stand against idol worship. An Elisha that will go from Gilgal to Bethel. An Elisha that will go on until they get to Jericho. An Elisha that will get on until they get to Jordan. An Elisha that will tarry before the Lord. An Elisha that will wait until the power comes upon them. An Elisha with a new mantle. An Elisha with a new anointing. An Elisha with a new power. An Elisha with a new authority. An Elisha with a new understanding. An Elisha with a new ministry. An Elisha that have borne the bridge behind. Oh God, give us Elishas in the church. Among the men, among the women. Among the old, among the young. God is looking for another Elisha. God is looking for another Elisha. God is looking for another Elisha. An Elisha that will pray and pray through. That will pray and pray through. An Elisha that will stand in the gap. An Elisha that will be waiting upon the Lord. Are you there, my brother? Are you there, my sister? Arise and call upon the Lord. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. Burn the bridge behind you. Burn the bridge behind you. Burn the bridge behind you. I will not go back to the world anymore. I will not look at the world anymore. I am going through. I am going through. I am going through. I am moving on. I am moving on until I am crowned with glory. I am moving on until I am crowned with power. I am moving on until the double portion will come upon me. Keep on moving on. Keep on moving on. On the bridge behind you, do you like Elisha? Follow on and follow through. Follow on and follow through. Until the power comes upon you. 
until the power comes upon you. The kingdom of God is waiting for you. The needy people are waiting for you. The sinners are waiting for you. The backsliders are waiting for you. You are the one to receive the power and wake up the people that are spiritually there. Move on and keep on and keep through until the power comes, until the anointing comes, until you are crowned with glory and power. Keep on moving on. I'm going through. I am going through. Oh Lord, I am going through. Let him keep you faithful. Let him keep you through.